All right, we're on section 8.4, which is about um, the basics of choosing video cards. 8.5, we're gonna talk about choosing it based on applications. This is really, a uh, section is on how to compare video cards. Now, last section, we talked about the video card specifications. And just like in um, the specifications on a PC, you can't just look at um, the CPU speed and the amount of memory and know how fast a computer is gonna be because there's lots of other things that go into it, right? The CPU generation, the CPU cache, the overall CPU rating, how much memory, how fast is the memory, what kind of hard drive we've got, uh, and what OS we're using all go together to really determine the speed of our PC. So all those specifications now go together and, and determine how fast a video card performs. Because of that, we're going to use Passmark, and Passmark is, um, we've used it for CPUs before, and we're going to use it for video cards as well. Passmark goes through and benchmarks all the different video cards, and just like we, when we went through and ran the test and uploaded it on our GPU in class, uh, users all over the world do the same thing with video cards to let them know um, basically how well uh, it performs in real life on certain specifications and for certain systems. So uh, Passmark has uh, a number of different video card comparisons. You can compare it based on overall performance. Um, and there are other ones as well that go through and say, hey, here's what we think the best one is. It doesn't have to be there. But these comparison sites are really what we are going to use to look at ours to say, okay, uh, based on these uh, tests that have been done by independent testers and inputs that have been given from users all over the world, what are uh, the best video cards? Now, we've already talked about the fact that uh, video RAM is important. Um, and in a video card for some specifications, video RAM is extremely important. And the more RAM that identical cards have, the better that card's going to perform. And in these um, specifications, we don't necessarily know what the default was that was tested. So when we look at these, um, and we're going to look at the websites here in a second, we need to take into consideration the fact that if it doesn't say how much RAM, we need to know what the default RAM is and whether this one has more or less RAM uh, when we're looking at that. So. Uh, another thing that we're going we're gonna to have to consider when we look at buying a video card, when we go and say, hey, this is the, video, this is the best video card, um, does my PC have the power available and the connections available to support it? Am I going to have to buy a new power supply to support this video card? Um, there are low power consumption models. In fact, in my PC over there in the corner, I had to get a specific video card that had no power connections because I can't replace the power supply in it. It is a specific Dell power supply that's in there. It's not a standard ATX power supply. And there are no spare power connections available to connect up a video card. So I had to use the best low power video card that was available on the market. In this case, it was a GTX uh, 1650 um, that has no power connections on it. But that's one of the things you have to look at. How much power does, the, does a video card require and will it work for me? And it says on here, low power models tend to have only one or none at all, six or eight pin connectors, where high power ones might have multiple, in other words, two. I've never seen one with more than two power connectors. And those can be either six pin or eight pin power connectors. If you've got one that requires two eight pin connectors, you need to make sure you've got the power available to run that processor as well. And then finally, we've already talked about the outputs that are available. Are you gonna have to buy a new monitor? Are you gonna have to get a special adapter? Does the video card I'm looking at support what I need it to connect to? This one on the left will do an analog because the DVI uh, supports analog connections or HDMI. This one does mostly analog with a digital, and whereas this one does all digital connections, and I would have to have some kind of an adapter to um, go from one to the other. 
You can see this one has two HDMI and two display ports and a DVI all on there. So I need to know what kind of monitor, what am I looking for to be my output? And lastly, will it fit inside my computer? So when I go and I'm gonna look at these specifications, I can't just say I'm buying this one, just like we had to make sure the form factor, the CPU fit with the, with the motherboard. Uh, we have to do the same thing with the um, graphics card itself. Will it physically fit? And I have had cards that I got before that did not physically fit. They were too deep for the case, or they were too wide because it took two slots and I didn't have a second slot because it was a BTX. You have to make sure it matches the form factor and fits inside uh, your computer itself. We've already talked about these specifications. We're going to look at these here in a second on some of these as we compare them. We're going to look at clock speed, number of cores or steam processors, depending on whether we're talking NVIDIA or AMD, and what kind of memory do I have and what's the speed and amount of that memory that I have. So let's go ahead and look at um, our website now because that was where I wanted to go to next. Let's see if I can find my, there we go, bottom of my screen. And we're gonna go ahead and go to uh, Passmark, and we're gonna go Passmark Video Cards. Now, when I go to Passmark, um, I will say I've got a couple things to look at. When I look at video cards, I, you can see I can see high-end, mid-range, and low-range. I can also look at best values, and I can compare, and I can look at the huge list of all of them at one time, which is ginormous. Um, I regularly use the compare one to say, hey, if I wanna upgrade this, how much better is it? For instance, um, if I use the compare, I had a 730 in my, um, in my computer. I had a GeForce GT 730, and I wanted to look at whether the 1650 was actually a better one and it's a 1650 standard not a super or ti that i put in there and i said well is that really going to improve my performance and so it lets you bring it up side by side uh, the difference between the 730 and the 1650. Uh, you can see it uses a pci express 2.0 uh, works on an 8 or a 16 which tells me it's probably communicating at 8 um, whereas the other one was a 3.0 x16 the clock speed, the top clock speed on the 730 is 902, um, and it's 1485 on the 1650. Um, the memory is actually could be faster on the 730 than it is on the 1650, but look at the maximum memory supported. The one I had in there only had a gig. It supports a max of two gig, um, and the one I got has four gig, and then we've got some other things that we need to look at that I haven't talked about yet. These are software things that the card supports. DirectX is a Microsoft software thing and um, they both support version 12.0. If you have something that needs DirectX 12.0 and you have a card that doesn't support it, you won't be able to run it. OpenGL is another uh, architecture of software the 730 only supported 4.5, whereas the new one supports 4.6. The power, maximum power consumption. This one is 75 watts, so you need to plan, do I have 75 watts free? Whereas the old one is 49. But look at the overall speed here that we're looking at. Um, this is almost, okay, I'm gonna call it nine times faster, almost 10 times faster um, on its ranking than the other one, and you can see here on the chart if I looked at the other one, but this is one way to compare two different processors. What do I have? What would I get? And by the way, this will let you compare ones that are integrated as well. Um, so if I wanted to look at the integrated one that, for instance, is on um, R1 uh, laptops, it has the 73010M, which stands for mobile. Um, and then how good is that? Oh my gosh, that's terrible. The 73010M mobile, and M means it's laptop processor, is abysmal in comparison to both these. So you could look, and I know I just did a laptop one, you could look at the one that's integrated on your computer and then say, how much better would I get if I bought this other one? Okay, so that's the compare option. Um, 
The next one I'm going to go to is best value. Uh, and I want to point out best value, the best value chart. This is the number of points you get per dollar spent. Doesn't mean it's the fastest one, but if um, in chapter nine, for instance, you're going to do a build your own PC and you get the limited amount of money, you only have $750 to build your entire PC, you're going to want to get the best video card for your money, not necessarily the best video card. So you can see right here up in this top ranking, the best video card for the money right now is the Radeon, by the way, um, anywhere you see Radeon or AMD video cards and anywhere you see GeForce or NVIDIA. Did I say that? AMD or Radeon, NVIDIA or GeForce. Um, just so you know that when you're looking at the comparison. So the best one for the money, meaning that it costs $199 and there's ones that are cheaper down here, but the points per dollar spent is what this is. That's how many G 3D Mark points, the comparison scale you get per dollar spent. So this one right here is the best you can get for the least amount of money. It's still $200, but you get one that's ranked $96.59 for that $200. It does, um, uh, and so I could go down here, and if I was trying to spend the least amount of money, I would go down to the highest one on here that met my budget. So maybe I only have 100, or I, I don't have $200, okay, that's $200. Let's say I only have $150 left on my budget, the one that performs the best under $150 is right here, the GeForce GT 1030, which is a terrible card. That's what we've got on our uh, club machines. I shouldn't say terrible, not a great card. Not a high-end gaming card by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so that's the one I, I, the best one I'd get for my money. That's what this price performance one is. Now, if I go to high end, now I'm just looking at the best card period doesn't take money into account at all. I could just as easily go through this one until I get to a hundred below $150 uh, to see if I can get, you know, what fits in my budget. And I don't think I'm going to see anything above that 1030. You can see there, some of them are really expensive or not available at all because of current uh, production limitations. Anyway, if I have the most amount of money, I've got $3,500 to, to build my PC. I'm going to go to this high end card. I'm going to build actually the rest of my PC and then say, how much money do I have left? I have a grand left to, to buy a video card. So I, can I fit this one in this Radeon 6800 XT in there? Or do I want the 3070 Ti, both of which are, are um, right in that point. 23,000 is the score on there. You're going to be very happy with either one of those video cards. Um, and you can see right now, uh, NVIDIA has the best video card on the list. Uh, Radeon's down here, but on the flip side, Radeon had the best video card for the money on the best value site. So when I go and look at these, obviously this 3090 Ti, over $2,000, showing as the best value. But the question is, can I actually find it? Let's see if it actually is available on Amazon for that price. It, it is. So if I had uh, $2,099.99, I could get the 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow 24. It's got 24 gig of RAM on this thing. Um, it's made by, now, we, because it's a um, GeForce, it's made by NVIDIA. The GPU is made by NVIDIA. But the video card itself is put together by a company called Zotac. Um, they made the enclosure. They're the ones who put the whole thing together and made and put the memory in it. And you can see it's 21 gigabits per second, 24 gig of DDR6X. Holy moly. That is a lot of money to spend for one video card. But I wanted to point those out so you kind of understood that when we're looking at video cards, they can be very, very expensive. And like I said, that's got 24 gig of RAM in it. Um, your system may only have 16 gig of RAM. So that might be a little bit of overkill. 
Okay, so that's how we look at video cards. We use Passmark. You can use um, Tom's hardware if you want to. In general, I use Passmark um, to determine what fits in my budget. And then the next section is on how to figure out which video card you have to have for a specific application. So right now, you should be going into 8-4 on choosing a video card. Make sure that you go up and read how to pick the right video card for your uh, desktop BC. It kind of goes into what casual versus light gamers versus serious gamers. Please take the time to read that. Um, talk a little bit about choosing a video card. There's two nice videos here that I want you to watch. So you're, you're gonna take 20 minutes to go through uh, this section now. Uh, and then this is really just what I just talked to you about, how to determine which video card is better. And the last section in chapter four is a uh, video again on um, purchasing the right video card for you. We're going to pause for a while here on section 8.4 because it's a good deal of extra material to go through. Please go through all that before you enter the quiz, and then we'll continue on with 8.5.